This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. All right, and with that, I call to order this meeting of the East Hampton Planning Board for Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. Um, five of us are in person. Harry Schumann is appearing remotely. Uh, first item on the agenda is public speak. Is there anyone that would like to speak to something that is not on the agenda for tonight? All right, moving right along. Uh, first item, we have planning board minutes, uh, December 20th, 2022. So, uh, no modifications I want to make. I motion to approve the minutes for December 20th, 2022. Second. All right, voting to approve the minutes for December 20th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. All right. All right. Uh, next item is minutes for January 3rd, 2023. January 3rd, 2023. Second. All right. All in favor of the January 3rd minutes. Aye. 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 Thank you, Harry. All right. Moving right along, we have a continued public hearing from Select Energy Development LLC, a special permit for a large solar energy facility. Um, like, we're waiting for some more information too, is that right, Eli? Or did we just want the draft decision? I thought we were waiting for the bond, the bond issue. The yeah, yeah, Jeff wanted to discuss it, um, people in the city, but um, he's looked at this condition that we have related to the bond and was comfortable going forward with it. Okay. Um, Jose, did you have anything, any anything to add or any questions about I uh, you to look at the draft decision? No, the, the draft decision contains everything that we talked about, so um, we are good with it. Um, all conditions are, we are, we are okay with it. Okay. Um, is there anybody else here who has any comments or questions regarding this application? Um, raise your what, what do we do on Google Meet? Raise your hand or... Yeah, uh, you put your name in the chat. Don't write in the chat other than your name. <laughs> All right. Looks like we've got nothing. So uh, the main reason for continuing this is to take a look at the draft decision before we voted on it. Um, and specifically go through the findings. Um, the only thing on the findings that jumped out at me, Eli, on number two, that looks like there's a word missing or extra word or something, and potential impacts to cap time ago, and we is supposed to be well. Um, but let's just go through these findings. That makes sense to the board. Definitely sure. Um, and everybody, everybody speak up if they have any questions or comments about which one. So, uh, First up is uh, solar facility shall be considered a structure for some of the conditions of this ordinance. That sounds like a wall. Two permits will be granted unless the permit granting authority finds in writing there's substantial evidence that A, the specific site is not appropriate, B, nuisance with respect to be created by the use, and C, adequate appropriate facilities will not be provided. Uh, finding as planning board finds the location is appropriate for use of large solar energy facility and that any potential impacts of the cap plan will be reviewed and permitted by Mass DEP prior to the issuance of a building permit. Three, compliance with laws, ordinances, and regulations. The finding is the planning board finds that the application is in conformance with local requirements and a condition of a permit requires submission of a permit to Mass DEP and therefore will be in conformance with state and federal requirements. For proof of liability insurance, the planning board has added a condition that liability insurance will be secured prior to the issuance of a building permit. I have site control. Planning board finds that the application is for a city owned facility. Uh, six, utility notification. Planning board finds that the application includes documentation that the utility company has been notified. Seven, step solar energy facilities are not permitted to be constructed or placed on land previously used for the Loudville Road landfill dump or solid waste facility. Planning board finds that this is not applicable. Eight, lighting. The planning board finds that there is no new lighting proposed for the solar facility and existing lighting at the wastewater treatment plant is sufficient. Nine, signage. 
planning board finds there is no signage proposed other than what is necessary for proper identification. Ten, advertising. Planning board finds that no advertising is proposed. Eleven, utility connections. Planning board finds that utility connect is underground. Twelve, permanent structures. Planning board finds the application is in compliance with this ordinance. Thirteen, emergency services. The planning board has included a condition that an emergency response plan be approved by the planning board prior to issuance of a building permit. 14 unauthorized access. The planning board finds the facility will include a perimeter fence with a locked gate with a knox box. 15 land clearing. The planning board finds the application is in compliance with this ordinance. 16 wildlife corridors. The planning board finds the perimeter fence has a six inch gap to allow for wildlife movement as requested by the Conservation Commission. 17 natural buffer for large solar projects the planning board finds there are no houses with a view of the solar facility there's a significant natural buffer and the, and the project is not visible from any public right of way and then we get into oh, this sort of drifts around oh yeah we're going to need to clarify, clarify that but yeah I'm sorry so yeah so this special. is for the special permit yeah. yeah um it conforms to the provisions of the ordinances of the city, stamped in general laws of Massachusetts, to all applicable rules and regulations of state and federal agencies. The planning board finds the project is in conformance with the provisions and ordinances of the city of East Hampton. As a condition of the approval, will obtain any necessary permitting from MassDEP and therefore will conform to the general laws of Massachusetts and all applicable state and federal rules and regulations. Eli, we might want to, we should probably mention that we're granting waivers. There were some partial and complete waivers on the application yep. that I think we all sort of agreed to move on with. Okay. The sort of unique thing of the board, which you probably know in their application, they lay out what they're looking for partial sure. full waivers on, but we should put that in there just so it's clear. Okay, under B or? Uh, and under yeah, A, it's, okay. the, it's an ordinance of the city of East Hampton. Great. Uh, protection of city amenities and abutting properties. Planning board finds the proposed project does not impact any city amenities or abutting properties given its location at the existing wastewater treatment plant and in an area that is not visible from any public way. Minimization of traffic and safety impacts. Planning board finds the expected volume of traffic is very minimal and will not have an impact on the neighborhood. The adequacy of methods of disposal of sewage and refuse. Uh, planning board finds the proposal will not negatively impact drainage or increase runoff, and the area of disturbance is not regulated by the city's stormwater ordinance as determined by the Conservation Commission in their issuance of a negative determination of applicability type three on November 14, 2022. Adequate means of protecting wetlands, watersheds, aquifers, and well areas. Planning board finds this project will not impact wetlands, watersheds, aquifers and well areas based on the Conservation Commission's issuance of a negative determination of applicability, Type 3, on November 14, 2022. Uh, or we'll send a letter here, too, on this one, Eli. Mitigation of adverse impacts on the city's resources. I think that's two separate ones, but we should check that. All right. Uh, planning board finds the proposed use will not disturb the city's water, sewage, or fire protection infrastructure. We're going to the off-street loading and unloading of vehicles, parking, lighting, and internal traffic control. Planning board finds there's adequate access to the site through existing driveways and minimal lighting and adequate lighting exists at the wastewater treatment plant. Efforts to integrate the development into the existing landscape. Planning board finds the location of the solar field is integrated into the current use as a wastewater treatment plant. Additionally, the location atop the cap landfill maximizes the use of this part of the property, which is set back and not visible from any public right of way. Minimization of the area over which existing vegetation is to be removed. The planning board finds that proposal will not require removal of significant vegetation. Consistency of the development with respect to setback area parking, architectural Scott style landscaping. The planning board finds that because of the location of the wastewater treatment plant and setback from any public right of way, the addition of the solar field is consistent with the existing use and location. Adequacy of the measures to prevent pollution of surface or groundwater, minimize erosion. Planning board finds that the project will not adversely affect sedimentation or groundwater levels, and the project is, is exempt from the city stormwater ordinance. Then K, adequacy of methods to ensure the use will not constitute a nuisance. Planning board finds that the installation of a solar field adjacent to the current use as a wastewater treatment plant will not constitute a nuisance since it is set back from any public right of way and does not create any odor, noise, or other impact. 
any issues with findings board members other than a letter discrepancy that you got okay and so then there are a few conditions here that are in the draft decision um first all exterior site improvements shall be constructed and maintained in accordance with the approved site plans that's a standard condition um two prior to issuance of a building permit the following conditions shall be met a, a certificate of liability insurance shall be submitted to the planning department, a copy of which will be filed and kept with the city clerk. Uh, B, the applicant should provide the city with financial surety to cover the cost of decommissioning in the event the owner fails to perform, and the city must remove the project from the site. The amount shall be $109,714 pursuant to section 7.3.8.6 of the zoning camp ordinance. Such surety amount shall be subject to an increase of 2% per year with annual compounding interest for the life of the project. The surety may be established through payments over time from the lessee or the owner of the project site and shall be fully funded within 10 years. Any documents and the agreement shall be in the, in the form satisfactory to city attorney and then be submitted to the planning board at a public meeting prior to the issuance of a building permit for this project. The scope and activities included in the decommissioning plan shall be substantially in accordance with the information included in the application packet dated December 2nd, 2022. Uh, no can come out now. So you don't want to do that yeah, for this project? Okay. Um, <laughs> wait, is that, do you want to keep the note in or do we want to do 125%? Is that what you're saying? 225%. I think that's what we've generally done. I would assume we. I remember at the last meeting we talked about price just a little bit. I had you know, yeah. once, um, and the numbers seemed appropriate. 125 percent is what we generally do, right? But it seemed like their estimate was decent. So that's my thought. I mean, I think the 125 makes sense just because it could be 20, 30 years from now, mm -hmm. and if you're trying to cover the decommissioning cost here on the side of caution. But didn't they add in two percent increase annually some per year? Yeah. yeah. So I think that covers it. But then again, you're right, 125% is taking it. Does anyone know what the difference would be? I don't. I didn't do the calculation. Uh, well, it's 109,000, right? So it'd be 27,000 yeah, or something. Like so 136. So how do you feel about that? That's the applicant. Yeah. Jose, are you okay with the 125% number? Um, yes, that, that, that'll be fine. Um, I just wanted to add that. The, the, the amount that you're seeing in there already has depreci depreciation uh, at 25 years. So that's something that you might want to consider. Yeah, I mean, I think that's typically how all of the decommissioning estimates are arrived at. The bylaw allows us to go up 125% of that to sort of provide a buffer. And I think that it probably makes sense. I agree. If we're going to Absolutely be consistent. Yeah, um, so that, that is okay. We, we agree with that. Okay. Um, oh, um, just a yep. bit of wording then in B with the change. We'll remove the note and we'll change the value. And maybe I would suggest after changing the value, put in parentheses after it 125% estimated cost of removal. Sure. That makes sense. I like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> next condition applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from MassDEP for modifications to existing landfill. The applicant shall submit proof that they have complied with this condition of the planning board and built planning department and building commissioner. This cannot be demonstrated or the mass DP permit requires changes to the approved plans. The applicant shall present the changes to the planning board at a public meeting for the board to determine if the changes are minor or significant enough to require a public hearing. And then finally, prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy or equivalent final approval, the applicant shall have coordinated and held an emergency personnel training with applicable city officials. Any comments or questions from planning board members? Any concerns or questions or comments from you, Jose? No. We, How about, we are good on our end. All right. Any other members of the public online have any comments or questions? All right. I motion to approve the special permit for select energy development at 10 Gosling Drive. Second. All right, voting to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Harry. No opposed, no abstain. All right. We will. Chris, you did that second? I did. Jose, we will get this decision finalized hopefully shortly and get out to you so you can get your paper thank in hand. Th thank you very much. We, we appreciate the time you guys put into this and um, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Uh,
All right. The surprising development. So if nothing else on the agenda. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Thank you. Voting to adjourn. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.